everyone. Welcome to the stream. Wow, you've all been busy chatting away to yourselves there, I can see. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good, good, good Sunday. <laughs> Hello all. Wow. Lots of you. Hello in Ohio, uh, Colorado, Oregon, Lincoln, Glendale, uh, Florida. Hello in Spain. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Now, can everyone hear me okay? Just to make sure that the microphone's okay and I'm not too loud and I'm not too soft. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. Hi, trees. I hope you're well from Hull. Been watching for a while and I think you're ace. Thank you so, so much. Welcome to the stream, everyone. A little bit quiet. Well, I'm a little bit quiet. Hi Candy from North Central West Virginia. Oh yes, it's definitely autumn, isn't it? Definitely autumn, people. Perfect sound, sounds good. Music level's good as well. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Well, for those of you that follow me on YouTube, you'll know that there was the YouTube video, which was like a monster this morning. And then I'm like doing the live stream as well. So, so yeah, you'd think that I don't have much to say, but well you know me I've always got something to say <laughs> hello hello in Maryland um, good morning in Utah all swell cooking chicken hi Tina how you doing my lovely hope you're well you're rubbing your hands like you're cold have you have you got your toasty socks on do you know what if I lift my so my foot up, in fact, I'm just going to do it because it'd be rude not to, right? I mean, I'll, I'll show my feet all over the place. I have my toasty socks on. <laughs> so yesterday I, I wore the cream ones with the pink heel and toe and today I'm wearing the glitzy ones. I thought I'll go glittery since as I'm streaming. So I thought I'd share the glittery socks with you. <laughs> Oh, what's this? X Stitcher says, your skin's glowing. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's just the nervousness of coming on live stream that does that to me, or whether it's that I'm a lady of a certain age, if you know what I mean. Could be both. Although it is, it's been a bit of an odd day here. So we had torrential rain earlier, but it's actually like mild temperature. So, and the sun's come back out. So it's not freezing like it has been. The heating has come back on though, I must say. I've had the heating on for the last couple of days. <laughs> Stitch Rovia saying, yeah, I knew it. I knew you should have those socks on. Yeah, definitely had those socks on. It's raining here, so a perfect day for staying in and stitching. Oh, yes, nothing quite like it on a nice rainy day when you can get yourself all cozied up. Um, hello in the Netherlands. I would love to say your name. Is it Ellie? Is that right? Do you know, it always frightens me to say people's names because you never know whether you're actually saying it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah says dropping dropping in and out of tonight's stream but everyone enjoy your night chatting and stitching oh thank you Hannah love the background with the stitchy things so pretty so not as pretty as you Ah, that's a nice thing to say I thought we'd go with the whole you know bits of floss and you know all the stitchy stuff that's what it's all about right so Lisa says I missed the last two days for A and T, so I figured I'd watch. I just watched the Zoom recording. Oh, Nanette McDonald. Oh, I didn't know that was on. Good morning in California. Welcome to the stream. So, what's this? Right. Any ideas why I have a beehive sewing box coming to me this week? <laughs> How many of you looked at the video and was just like, oh, look at look at the bumblebee sewing stuff? <laughs> I'm sorry if I totally enabled you. I, I I fell in love with it. As soon as I saw that little sewing box, I was like, oh, I have to have it. I have to have it. And then when I actually got it, because I really didn't think he was listening, and he bought me this. Anyone that doesn't hasn't seen the video already, this sewing box up there behind me is my new birthday present from my husband. 
And at the time when I was sort of like trying to shove it under his nose, he was acting like he wasn't actually paying any attention or listening to me. So I didn't think it was coming. And then when he got it, I was like, oh, and then because then I just had to buy all the things that sort of accessorized with it. <laughs> it would be rude not to. <laughs> um, may I ask if anyone's been or recommends the knitting show this weekend in London? I have been to Ali Pally to the stitching and knitting show here in London. And it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. And in all fairness, if it wasn't for the fact that I've just come back from the Chatelaine retreat last weekend and didn't have another retreat coming up in about three weeks, then I would have been going. But yeah, someone has to sort of rein herself in just a smidgen this year. So I decided this year I wouldn't. This year I decided that I wouldn't go. But I will go next year, definitely. Just make sure that you hold, you put your hands in your pockets and don't spend too much money. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So Tina says, turned on the heating here yesterday. It was not, I was not pleased. No, no, the autumnal weather is definitely starting to let us know that it's here and having a little bite, isn't it? Sally says, California is still in smoke and we are still in the 90s. Send us your rain. I would love to send you our rain. Because we've been having like torrential downpours. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Everything's drowning in the garden. Uh, interrupted your floss tube to watch your live. <laughs> All right, I'll try not to do any spoilers. But yeah, just, just a whole... Do you know what? When I was recording that, I had these notes. Because you have to have notes. And although I knew that I had a fair amount to talk about, I didn't realise that there was as much as there was. So when it actually got to the bit where I'd actually talk about the retreat and you know how it went and how much fun I had and all those all all that stuff, I'd run out of time. And I'm like, I can't make this video any longer than it is. It was already a monster to start with, and it took me all day yesterday to edit it and to get it to render and then get it to upload. And yeah, so and then it didn't even come out until this morning when my 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 thought was that it was going to actually load in. Well, I was hoping to have it up last night. As you can see, that I failed miserably. <laughs> um, I watched your series on full coverage and you gave me the confidence to start my first hate. I'm doing a Pompanium Lady and I'm loving it. Oh, good for you, Debbie. So very pleased that it helped you. I, I, do you know what? When I done that series, I just thought, you know, it's got to help someone. But, you know... Who it would help, I'm not sure. Because sometimes I do ramble on and I sit there and think, maybe I'm the one, the only one that understands how my brain works to, to get it right in my head. But I've had so many people that have said that it's it's made total sense to them. So I'm so, I'm so pleased. Okay, shall I, put, shall I put the stitching on? You can see what we're going to be stitching today. So we're going to do winter because it makes total sense in, in the aim that hopefully in the not too distant future, I might actually get it so that it's um it's finished and on the wall that would be nice wouldn't it to have something on the wall at winter in fact in fact people what i should have done was got my autumn wreath out and put it where the high hills are because it is officially autumn here i think the official date for autumn here in the uk i think is the 22nd of september so i should have really done that shouldn't i is what i should have done Hi, Sheila in Louisiana. Welcome to the stream. Nanette, watch the video. The symbols are not right. Oh, okay. Is the high heels behind you a cross stitch? Every time I see it, my daughter would love that. It is. It is a high heels. Um, it's a soda stitch. What am I doing? I haven't even... This is where I've got to. Let me just backtrack here. So this is where I've got to. And now I'm going to zoom it in so that I can put my chart on this side and you don't see it. So if all of a sudden you start seeing things that you're not supposed to see, please just scream at me down the chat to say, Teresa, we can see everything. Because that's not the plan. The plan is that you don't see. Okay, there we go. Okay, what have we got here? So, yeah, the High Heels, sorry, High Heels Collection. So that is one of the Soda Stitch, Soda Stitch charts. And would you believe it, but they discontinued it. 
And for the life of me, there was a set of three of them. So there's three high heels on each set. So it's like a collection. And there was three sets of them. I got this one. It took me forever to stitch it. And I was thinking, there's no way that I'm going to stitch any more of these. Because at, the, at the time when I first stitched it, I didn't really rate it that much. I didn't think it was amazing. Um, until I put all the back stitch in and then got it framed. And I was like, oh. Then went to go and look for the other two. Only to find that they don't do them anymore. I was severely gutted. There's a lovely lady that's been reaching out to me. I can't work out where she's from. But there's a couple of Russian sites that have actually got the charts on their sites. But it doesn't look like they've got any in stock to actually purchase them. So, so yeah, a bit gutted about that. Um, what's everyone stitching on? I'm stitching on Christmas House but hard to see. Same design as D Stitch out is stitching. Bit of Christmas. I thought I'd go with winter rather than Christmas for once. Just so that, yeah. Because I was thinking, well, winter comes first and Christmas comes second. So if I, if I do well at this, oh, hold on. If I do well at this and get this one done, then I can finish off the Christmas one is the plan. It's always good to have a good plan, although <laughs> all those best laid plans and I'm absolutely terrible at them. I love to plan, but whether I actually follow through with my plan is a whole nother matter. <laughs> Rhonda says, go crazy, crazy. We relocated and all my stitchy stuff's packed up. Maybe over a month before I stitch. Oh no. Have you not left a little small out for you to sort of at least have a little play and a little tackle with some stitching? Right, can everyone see the stitching okay? Is that all right? Um, Maddie says, I'm so excited for stitching. Get stitching, Maddie. Let's go. Let's do this. Not that I ever actually get that much stitching done because I spend so much time looking at the chat and talking to you all. And waffling and talking your ears off. Have been listening to Court of Thorns and Roses and stitching this morning. Perfect day so far. Oh, Paula, have you been have you been reading those as well? They're a little racy, right? I had it on on audiobook, um, and normally I'd listen to it sort of with my earphones on, and I didn't have my earphones on because I thought I was the only one that was around, and it it didn't dawn on me. Darren came in, and I'm sitting there stitching and then listening to my audiobook, and then it got all rather racy, and Darren was like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what you listen to when I'm not here." I was just like, "Oh." Even I was blushing, it was that bad. So Lisa Robinson is stitching Halloween Quaker, day three of 13. Stitch, 13 stitches of Halloween. Do you know what? I haven't got any Halloween stuff. I really should get down with the, with the seasonal stuff, shouldn't I? Also inspired by your videos to get my first haid, working in Neptune's horse. Max colour and full picture version. Wow. Wow. I bet that looks amazing. Uh, do you know what? I've not tried a max colour yet. I'll, I'll, well, I'll confess. I've put my hands up. I haven't done it yet. It worries me about how many colour changes and how much confetti that actually includes. Good morning from New Zealand. Good morning, Lee. Welcome to the stream. I've watched your parking video and I'm parking in everything now. Thank you so much. It has made everything so much easier. I'm pleased it's helped you and I hope you've got your own little style going on with it. It's very, it's, it's, parking is a very personal thing, isn't it? Um. Hi Charlotte. Of course you're working on a haid. I think I know which one it might be as well. I, oh, the chat just disappeared again. Sorry, I'm going to miss a few. So one, two, miss a few. <laughs> Goth Mama says, I finished blo uh, Cherry Blossom Creek. Oh, it's disappeared. Sorry. <laughs> Stephanie, hi from New York. No, hi in New York. Welcome to the stream. You've inspired me to try Chatelaine. Now to find the perfect pattern. Oh, <gasps> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Okay, let me just quickly do a bit of counting to make sure that I'm I'm not over-egging this, people. Once I get my straight line. 
I thought I'd pick something that had sort of straight lines. So if I went a bit wrong, it would only be like stitch over a few stitches that are wrong rather than actually frogging anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Um Hi Emma, welcome to the stream. Jordan stitching on a Hey Dragon History Story Keep, my second one. Oh, well done you. How are you enjoying that? Tina's still working on her Hey Parrot. <laughs> There's always a still working when we're talking about Hades. They're, they're, they're not something to sort of think, oh yeah, I'll get that done in a year, because it never happens. I completely over-egg it of how quickly I can get something stitched and actually find I'm nowhere, nowhere near. I'm stitching our big Chinese pre-printed today. Twelve jingling ladies. Oh, do you know what? I've not tried a pre a pre-printed. I've only ever done this. Three more. Three more, and then I'll have my bearings, people. I should have probably done this ahead of the stream going live, shouldn't I? Okay, right. Definitely got the right amount. Wonderful. Hi, trees. I'm stitching Spooky House by X's and O's. Halfway stitched after three weeks. Have a look at this piece when you get a second. Beautiful but challenging. Okay, Spooky House by X's and O's. Hold on, I've got to write it down because, yeah, got a brain like a fish. How am I going to, oh, okay. What was it called? Spooky House. Spooky House. X's and O's. Gotcha. I'll have a little look at that. Thank you. Sam Shaw. Hi, Teresa. Love your videos and lives. You enabled me to buy so much and I think it's fabulous. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> well, look, if I go and buy all the things and I get totally enabled, then it's only fair that I sort of, you know, do, do the same back, in my opinion. I don't see why I should be the only one that gets totally bowled over by just about everything I see, it appears. Oh, it's disappeared off the screen. Hi, Sky Fox. Welcome to the stream. Stitching on a Hade Sleepy Hollows. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's a lot of you doing the Hades then. Charlotte says, just over 5k stitches left. Oh, look at the finish line. The finish line's in sight, sweetheart. It's in sight. Right, I'm going to have to move myself because there's a bit of a weird little angle going on here. Let me just... Let's see. Let's see if that helps. So, Beck says, I'm not impressed. First, my other half gave me his cold. Now he's lost my stitching scissors. He decides to move them from where I left them and then put them on the sofa, but I can't find them. <laughs> I, I, I on purposely do not put any of my stitchy stuff near my husband because honestly some of the things that he will use my stitching stuff for would make your eyes boggle. Really would. He knows. He knows it's a bit like sort of my... Um, when I used to bobinate everything, I used to have the dry markers or the permanent markers, the little um, thin tip ones so that I could write the numbers on. The amount of times that he went to try and use them, I'm like... Uh, 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 sunshine. I don't know what you think you're doing, but back right off. They are not for you. I'm stitching on Halloween Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplers. Do you know what? I've looked at that one. I've looked at that one, and every single time I look at it, I'm like, wow, I love it. Absolutely love it. But the reality of it is, would I stitch it? What do you think? Do you think I would? Or do you think it's just that I just don't want to feel sort of left out? I see these things and I'm just like, oh wow. Earphones are a must with those books. I listen covertly while walking around a car show with the boys because I just couldn't stop listening. 
<laughs> I'm on, I don't know what book, what book are you on? I'm on book, I think it's book three now. Hi Stephanie in South California, oh, South California. Not fall like 97 degrees here today. Oh, wow. Miss Jensen, good evening in Denmark. How's the weather there? Predictive text. What is audio book you <laughs> What is the audio book you're talking about? Um, scroll back up. There's uh, it's called the the Court of Roses and Thorns. I think it is. There's one roses and thorns. Each one it says the call or a call, and then it's roses and thorns, and there's something and something, and there's like a succession of books. Um, but I forewarn you, it's about sort of um, I don't know. If you're into sort of things like Game of Thrones and the action that sort of goes with that, it's sort of like that, but more on a fantasy level. So it's more sort of fairies and... But it's not fairies. Not like how you think it is anyway. Trust me. Uh, yeah. I'll say no more, but yeah. It's definitely yeah, I have to say. Even I was just like, wow, that's, uh, that's super racy. Super racy. And because Lauren's read them, well, Lauren, Lauren's actually read the books because she's a little bit of a bookie. She loves to smell the books. I don't understand that myself. But because I do my stitching, I'm like, I haven't really got time to read a book. Because otherwise I wouldn't get my stitching done. But I do love to sit and listen to the books whilst I'm stitching. And then when I go to lay in bed, because normally my eyes are too tired to do any stitching when I go and lay in bed. Um, so I'll just sit there and listen to the audiobook. In fact, there's been a couple of times I've actually fell asleep listening to it, so I've had to sort of have the uh, the auto shut off so that it only goes another five minutes after you've sort of sat in bed and it'll automatically switch off so that I know I don't miss too much. Michelle Bean, where can I see this parking video? Hi, Shell, how you doing, sweetheart? Um, you will find the parking video is in the in my videos under um, the full coverage mini series. I think is where it is, and there's one on there where I show how I do my parking. If I've got that wrong and anybody else knows more than I do of my own channel, then feel free to correct me. <laughs> Teresa, how is the loft coming along? The loft is coming along nicely. In fact, one of the things that I was going to say before I sort of, you know, went rabbiting off like I normally do is that if you do hear any noise, it's because a husband is overhead. He's up there. Um, banging, and well, I say banging around. He was banging around up until literally 10 minutes. 10 minutes before this stream, although I had all this set up ready to go, Ten minutes before this stream, Hubby was channeling out that wall over there. With a great big drill and getting dust and dirt all over my house. And I'm like, you are going to have that done, aren't you? You're not going to make any noise, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that building works. And I wouldn't mind, but the worst part about it was I had my Chatelaine. Um, my new Chatelaine, the Frosty Not Garden out on the frame because I was stitching on that last night and I had it on the on the stand but just slackened off but I didn't have anything over the top of it and then all of a sudden he started drilling and dust was going everywhere and I was just like oh no <laughs> so I had to quickly go and cover everything up because I was just like no that that can't happen not this early on in the game anyway Hi, Trees, a question. Working on my first mirabilia, do you wash then iron completed mirabilia before beading or wash with beading completed? Um, Deborah, I personally don't wash my mirabilias, but that is only because I haven't done a mirabilia that has been on anything other than a hand dyed fabric. And obviously, hand dyed fabrics, it's not something that I would, I would necessarily want to um want to wash but personally if you're asking me what i would do if i was you i would say do all your stitching first give it a little wash and then put the beads on 
that's just the way I'd do it. Anyone else? Has anyone else got experience of that where they've, you know, washed their mirabilia? Finishing off Lady of the Flag. Oh, sorry, it just disappeared off the screen. <laughs> Not doing very well with this chat today, am I? <laughs> I'm sorry. Working on part two of Lucky Nutcracker Cell from the Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Lovely, Julie. Angela is trying to do a page a page a month of a haze, then rest a month I do other things. Wow. How, how's that working out for you? I would love to be able to get a page a month. That would be glorious. <laughs> Just don't have enough time. <laughs> X Stitcher, I'm working on John Clayton's Elegance Josephine. Lots of pretty blues. Yeah, I've seen those ones. They look really, really lovely. Okay, let's see if I can... Now, what do you reckon the likelihoods are that I'm going to be able to get through this stream and talk to you all and follow this chart without needing to frog anything? How confident are we feeling? She says. Okay, where are we? Yeah, okay. Hi, Ingris. Welcome to the stream. Do you use a frame holder for your Q-snap? I have got it on a table stand. Um, it's a Lowry desk. A Lowry desk stand. For when I'm sitting here doing this. Which makes it a bit of a deal breaker. Teresa, I'm doing different. I'm making them individual so they can be in my large dough bowls. Oh. Oh, in a dough bowl? Oh, is that like one of the, is that like, when you say a dough bowl, is that like a, a giant, like a giant dish? Is that what that is? Miss Jensen says it's raining, storm, a full on autumn weather and cold. Oh my love, I hope you've got your heating on and you're all nice and curled up. Sounds good. Love Games of Thrones and Outlanders, both of them were raunchy. Yeah. Stitch Rover, Stitch, Stitchy Revo, uh, there's raunchy and then there's raunchy. This is arguably, well, I'm a seasoned old woman. You know, there's not much that makes me blush. I, I was blushing. I was like, wow, <laughs> really? <laughs> so if you're into a bit of sauce, a bit of sauce with your books. But like I say, if you've got children or you've got, you know, husbands sitting by, or partner, or anyone that's likely to sort of pounce on you if they realise that you're listening to something quite so racy, then yeah, you might want to sort of do discreet listening or discreet reading. I'm not a prude, honest. Love those books. <laughs> Anastasia. <laughs> Black Dagger Brotherhood, Vampires and Naughty. What more could you ask for? Yep, yeah, I've I've done the vampirish ones. And naughty. I haven't got to the racy pass. Oh wait, why does the chat keep disappearing? I'm gonna have to move down the chat. Um Hi Isabel, welcome to the stream. How you doing, my lovely? Hi, Stacey. How was your birthday meal? Oh, my birthday meal was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. Every single time I go to that restaurant, I think I'm going to eat something different, and I ended up eating exactly the same thing because it was so nice the first time. Talk about creature of habit. I should really sort of, you know, at least try something else, not just eat the same thing over and over again. Medusa Yarn, so happy I caught your live. Hi, welcome to the stream. Hi, Linda. Late joining, missed the notification because I was concentrating on Stitchy Project. Well, good for you. At least someone's concentrating. I would love to sit here and tell you how much I'm concentrating, but yeah, well, let's not, let's not go there, right? Because every time I sit there thinking I'm concentrating on what I'm doing, 
I'll get off the stream and then it'll be like, oh damn it. I obviously wasn't concentrating as much as I thought I was concentrating because I normally have to frog. It's like a, it's a thing. It's just a thing that I have to do, it appears. What do you, what do you all do with your finished work? It seems some of you have lots of them. Are you wall covered? Or are your walls covered? Do you give them to friends and relatives? I would love to say that I've got lots of finishes, but I don't. But the woolly hatted stitcher, now I know for a fact she has got lots of finishes. Because she showed them to me at the retreat, didn't you, my love? And it appears that they have so many of them, these people that get all these lovely finishes, um, that they just stick them in a plastic box. And every, every now and then, one in a, once in a while, something will get framed or finished. But it's, you know, it's one of those, it might do, but it might not. <laughs> I'm giving all the secrets away now. Just call me Jane. Oh, thankfully. <laughs> Thank you, that makes it a little bit easier, Jane. Cheers for that. Now I've just got to remember, it's Jane. Um... Hi, Deanne. Welcome to the stream. Book one, ready to listen. Oh, prepare yourself. I'm working on Big is Beautiful. It's an elephant. Sounds lovely, Emma. Is it a full coverage or is it um, not a full coverage? Bathing my granddaughter and listening but not stitching. First time I've had her in two weeks due to daughter's brain surgery. It's such a special time. Oh, Hannah, I hope it all went well. And I hope you're getting to enjoy some some time with your granddaughter. Isabel says, I'm happy to be home today thanks to the marathon. Yeah, stuck indoors because you can't go anywhere. <laughs> okay, let me get another strand. Let's see, 3834. Got the heat on and the pyjamas on and stitch, stitching a name on the Shetland lace knitted christening gown I've made for my sister's boy's baby. Oh, that sounds nice. You're stitching a name on it. Oh. That sounds interesting. So when you say stitching the name on, do you stitch the name on... Like on the actual gown. Like on the front of it. Hi Cheese, I want to get some beautiful new fabrics to stitch on. Is stitching on Opal Lugana any different to stitching on normal Lugana? Um, in my... In my opinion, yes. Yes, it is different. Only because I've always found that whenever I've stitched on an opalescent, especially if it's a hand dyed, so you've got hand dyed, by, by hand dyeing the, the even weave in the first place, it causes an element of shrinkage. So when they say you've got a 28 count, for instance, you know, you've ordered a 28 count even weave hand, hand dyed, you tend to find that most fabrics that have been hand dyed are actually, they've shrunk even more than what their existing fabric size was. So that that makes it so that each time I, hence the reason why I'm sort of, I tend to go more for 25 counts and 28 counts on the hand dyed fabrics because there's always a bit more shrinkage because of the hand dyeing process. Um, but my experience is that anything that I've stitched on that's opalescent, I think does the same thing again. It's almost like the opalescent makes it so that it's even, I find it a little bit, a little bit more shrunk. But that's just my personal opinion. And it may be brand sometimes as well. But best thing to do is go for a count that you know you're very, very comfortable with, like a 25 count, get it in the opalescent, and then you'll be able to sort of see the difference um, between the opalescent versus the non-opalescent. Stacey says, brought your online organiser, but do you have any videos on how to use it? I do. If you look on my YouTube channel, 
There should be one about the planner and how to navigate yourself around on the planner. Um, but if you get stuck, by all means, fling me an email um, and anything that you get stuck on, you're not sure on, um, I could probably do like a quick video shoot on, on my one so that I can show you anything you need to know. Pauline says, I frame them and rotate them on the walls like every month I change it. So what, you rotate all of your all of your finishes that you hang on the walls? God, I'll be there all day. <gasps> Hi Susan, welcome to the stream. So if anyone doesn't know, Susan Hardy that is just flagged up in the chat, she is my secret, my secret sock girl. She's the one that makes my socks. <laughs> Susan, I think I was wearing, yeah, I was wearing your socks yesterday. So I've got Anne's socks on today. <laughs> Emma says, it's a full coverage and my daughter Keely named it Hibiscus. Oh, lovely. Five days post-op, still early days, but yeah, doing well. And we can see the little ones again, so all good. Oh, that's good to hear, Hannah. I'm, I'm so pleased everything's going the way it should. So, Nanette, so this is about the dough, the dough bowl. Yes, it's a long wooden bowl for making bread in the 16 to 1900s to mix dough. I have my great-grandmother's. It's very large, and she had 25 children. 25 children? <gasps> Oof. Was she like pregnant every year? <laughs> I can't even imagine what having 25 children must be like. But then saying that, in my my grandparents' family, they, they, they were 12. I think 12 plus, well they basically was whatever a football team plus a reserve was, was how they, how they used to use it. So it was always like the football team are coming. Right, let me just check, make sure I'm getting this right. I'm not messing it up no we're not messing it up we're fine um it's just too bad putting those beautiful pieces in a box if i ever finish my hate i hope it will be something i'll be handed down a few generations i like to think the same thing too and the fact that i've got so many hades that still need stitching and she's sitting there saying that but i've actually i'm itching to start another few there's a few that i've got in the in the drawer that, you know, when it's just like, yeah. As if I haven't got enough hades. I've got more than enough hades. There's, there's absolutely no reason to want to start another one. And here I am sitting there thinking, but I really want to start that one. So the ones that I want to start is... Um, a Stitch in Time. I've had that ever since it first came out. And just never... Because it's big, I was like, oh, you know, I'll see how I get on with my other ones first. But the more I look at it and the more I see other people stitching on it, the more the more I feel like I want in. She says, as if I haven't got enough to do with all the other starts and all the other things. Hi Debbie from Ohio. I have this pattern you're working on. I guess I should get it out and start it. I love the Cricut collection. Yeah, I must admit, when I I was when I did spring, I wasn't 100% sure what I thought. Then I did autumn and was just like, I love that. So at that point, I was like, well, I have to do winter because it makes total sense, which then obviously means, well, I just have to do summer. But I must admit, I think my... I think at the time I said I wasn't really a Halloween person. So at first I was never really drawn at the autumn one because it had sort of pumpkins and Halloween-y type things on it. But in all fairness, so far, I mean, I don't know. This one's starting. I'm, I'm rather enjoying stitching on this one. Um, but I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed stitching autumn and literally stitched it so fast, which was a bit of a surprise because I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that it was going to sort of once I got going on it that I was going to be like, oh, I love stitching on this. I just need to keep stitching on it. Strange how some patterns really sort of start screaming at you to stitch on them. And other patterns you're like, well, it's nice. 
And I do like it, but it's not it's not really screaming at me to put everything else down and just just stitch that. Which is what happened with autumn. Although I must admit, when I was stitching on autumn, I was using my um my little uh patoki stands and I was doing a lot of stitching whilst I was laying in bed watching TV. I think it was sort of yeah, I think the weather was a bit cold that year. So I think I just kept going and laying on the bed. And because I was laying on the bed, I just seemed to sort of get a bit of a stitch on. Um, I find working on the opalescent gives me a headache because of the way the light reflects back on the sparkles. Yes, Tina, that that, that is one of the things that I noticed is that I get the glare, especially when I've got my light on, when I've got my big uh, daylight light over the top of my stitching, where you sort of get all the shiny reflections from all the twinkles of the of the opalescent. If I'm tired, I get that. Hi, Danielle. Welcome to the stream. Oh, welcome to the first live stream. <laughs> Charlotte says, what's one more hate? She would say that. How many whips have you got, Charlotte? Come on. Press up. The only reason that I know that the woolly hatted stitcher is Charlotte is because we was at the retreat together. And that was what I was talking about earlier, wasn't it? That obviously going to the Chatelaine retreat and then coming back and recording my video, you would have thought that I would have had all these things to say about the retreat. But in all fairness, I was having so much fun there that I didn't really record anything. There was one little bit of footage that I did when there was no one in the stitching room at like six o'clock in the morning because all the ones that were at this Chatelaine um, retreat last weekend, um, they were all what I call your night owls. So I was going off to bed by about midnight and I was leaving quite a few of them still in the room. But I was going down into the room at like, I don't know, six o'clock in the morning and I was the only one there. So from six o'clock till about eight o'clock, I'd sit and stitch by myself. And then all of a sudden, um, it was normally Francis and Chris, I think, that turned up next. But because of that, it was like, well, I can't just go around and start recording what's on people's stuff. So I could only really record sort of the finishes that were on like the finishing table. Um... And I would have loved to have done some recording, but it is a little bit, you have to be a little bit careful when you go to some of the retreats because not everyone is happy for you to start, you know, waltzing around the room with your camera or with your phone and recording stuff because some people are shyer than others. So, and obviously under normal circumstances, when I go to my retreats, most of the, the retreats that I go to, I know quite a few people in the room. So therefore, I'll always sort of say to them, girls, have you got a problem with me recording? And normally, they'll be like, you can record my stitching, but don't show my face. Hence the reason why normally you hear me talking to someone and I show I show someone stitching, but I don't actually show the person. Because that's normally, they don't want to be on the camera. Which is fine and fair play. But I didn't really know as many people this time. But I would have loved to have recorded, because the fact that it was a Chatelaine retreat and almost everything that was being stitched on everybody else's was a chatelaine of some description of which it was like totally enabling totally enabling i cannot i cannot even begin to tell you how many chatelaines i saw in person and i was like ah oh, i'd love to see that one oh oh look at that oh yeah i'd love to do that one that's sort of how it was it was bad full on restraint had to take place and as per usual, I was the total social butterfly. I spent more time being a social butterfly and talking to people than I did stitching. I did very little stitching. In fact, the most stitching that I got done was at six o'clock in the morning when I was in the room on my own. <laughs> hey, Anne. Good evening. Glad you're wearing your socks. I was wearing your socks. Oh, I'm wearing your socks today. Am I? Yes. Yes. Do you want to see? Do you want to see your socks? Let's just 
get the leg up. There they are. Look. They're, they're having a run. Oh, they sparkle so well in the light. Oh, they sparkle so good in the light. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm loving my socks. Do you know what, though? You've totally enabled me. Or say enabled me. You've inspired me. Because I wore... I wore Susan socks yesterday. I'll see if I can do this without banging. I wore Susan socks yesterday, and I was just like, oh, they feel so good on my feet. Even with my slippers on. You know when like, you got you, you got your socks on, and then you put your slippers on? And I was like, oh, they feel, they feel so good. And squishing my feet. And I was like, they're so nice. And I was like... Yeah, love those. And then I've put yours on today and I'm walking around with yours on and I'm just like, wow, yeah. And it's like, I just can't bring myself to put a pair of socks on that are shop bought now because they do feel so, so different to these ones. So now there is, you know, there is no choice, people. I'm going to have to start stitching socks. It's official. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip. It's official. I need to, I need to learn how to knit socks. Just so I can have a whole drawer of socks. She says. Can't even knit a scarf, can I? Or a shawl. Not without an extra appendage. Can you imagine what a sock would look like? <laughs> I mean, I can't exactly have an appendage. Well, maybe I could. I could, like, you know, I'd, I could have a space for an extra toe or something instead. <laughs> oh, dear. Have I managed to do that without showing you all my chart? Have I managed that? Hi Todd, welcome to the stream my lovely. Are you knitting now? Or are you stitching? Cindy says, hi Teresa, was glad to hear you're encouraging everyone, no matter their level, to go to the stitching retreats. After falling, injury and surgery on hand, physical therapy using stitching as therapy. Cindy, uh, do you know what? When I saw that message on my, on my comments, you know when it's sort of like something tugs at your heartstrings? Because I'm like, I remember being the new person. I remember my first, the first time I went to a retreat. But the the thing was, at least then I was, I was already, I was already sort of stitching. Admittedly, I didn't think I was good enough to go to a stitching retreat. I was a bit, you know, scared. If it hadn't have been for the people saying, you know, no, 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 it's it's fine. You can come. It's you know, it's, you don't you don't have to be a professional stitcher. Um, but I can imagine that that's how it may come across. But it's not like going to a class, is it? It's not like... I mean, there's like uh, the Royal School of Needlework in London. They do classes. And a couple of times... And this is me being totally honest. So although I'm sitting there telling everyone, go to a stitching retreat, you know, everybody's welcome. It doesn't matter whether you've never stuck a needle into fabric before and you fancy doing it at the retreat. That's totally fine. In fact, that's probably the best time to do it. I would say that the retreats, arguably, are great for people that are sort of new to stitching because there is a whole bundle of knowledge in one room. So if there's anything you don't know, and if you're brave enough to say, well, look, I've, I've only just started doing this. I don't really know what I'm doing. Have you got any tips? Honestly, the people in the room, they will talk your ears off with their knowledge because they are just so knowledgeable. Um, but there's also people there that haven't been stitching that long. But it's the fact that everybody shares information. And if anyone gets stuck on anything, normally everyone's like, oh, well, if you're stuck on that, bring it with you and we'll all have a little look at it and we'll see if we can work out what's gone wrong. That's what I like about it. So that that's my point. It's No one should ever feel that you can't go to a retreat because you don't think that you're either experienced enough or good enough or that your stitches look just so. I mean, my God, if everyone looked at my stitching, it would be like, no. No, that's not something you want to be looking at. 6am, do you not sleep? <laughs> not so well anymore, it appears, no. But um, but no, hence the reason why I go to bed at about midnight. But by 6 o'clock, that's it, I've got to get up. But then I'm so used to getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to work. I'm, I mean, admittedly, I haven't gone into the office for, for quite some time now. So you'd think that I would have adjusted, but... I'm definitely an early bird. But then I used to get up and go for runs at five o'clock in the morning before I went to work. So the woolly hatted stitch has got 193 whips. 193 whips, my God. Does that not give you palpitations? That, that would give me palpitations, I have to say. 
have you shared any of your projects? Would love to see. <laughs> If I'd have been good, if I'd have been good enough to have my camera out when I was at the Chatelaine retreat, I could have shared some of them because they was in a box. PJ Robertson, hi in California, welcome to the stream. Hi Leah. Um, hi Teresa, love your videos. Greetings from Spain. Hi Mary, welcome to the stream. Sky Fox says, "I love your knit. I love I love to knit socks. What heel do do you all knit? Well, at the moment, I don't knit any, but I'm going to confess. I wasn't going to show anyone this. Do you reckon I should show them? Todd, should I show them? Susan, should I show them? The only reason these two people know is because I've already been on Messenger with them this morning, <laughs> talking about knitting." <laughs> Um, Leah says, watching your number 82 September update when I saw the live notification. <sighs> Welcome to the stream. Not only do you get a live stream today, but you also get an upload for, for September. Teresa, check out the vanilla sock pattern. Do you know what? Written for beginners. Should I show them? Yes, show them. Okay. Karen, you're on, you're on the stream. Hello, my lovely. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... You're getting like a, an insight to what happens to me. Hold on. Hold on. So, Teresa sort of did this. Sort of. Now, don't all fall about laughing, okay? It's not the best yet. It, it takes some doing. See? See, this is my little partial sock <laughs> there are a few problems with the sock admittedly not that bit that bit's okay but um yeah it's um Teresa have you been watching Strictly Come Dancing yes I've been knitting and stitching to it <laughs> great start on your sock right okay so I have a question so for those knitters that are on here I'm just gonna move me needle out of the way a minute when you're working with circular needles, okay, she says, let me see if I can do this without it all falling off. That's the only thing that worries me. Is like, is it, if this falls off, I'm in trouble. I mean, all right, I know there's a little hole there. We're going to ignore that, right? Ignore the little hole, okay? Ignore that. But where you do the join on the first few rows, when I first tried to join the circle, after I'd done like the straight number of stitches and then I tried to circle it together, it went a bit weird there. So is there something special that I'm supposed to do? Because I've got a little V there. I think I might have done something wrong there to start it off. But once I got going after sort of two or three rounds, it was fine. Jane says, I'm trying to learn to knit socks too. How's that going for you? That looks to be a great sock. Dive into it. I did three years ago and now I'm flying off. Now they're flying off my needles. I wish they would fly off my needles and be done. <laughs> Love those colours. Have you considered doing a Chatelaine specialty stitch video? It may be too complex, but would be super helpful and much appreciated. I can do, but each Chatelaine has its own set of specialty stitches that you stitch. I mean, obviously, I could I could do my specialty stitches. I've still got quite a few to do on um, Evening in the Park, that's for sure. Um... And now that I've started Frosty Knot Guard, and I, I suppose there's no reason why I can't. It's just whether I can communicate what I mean <laughs> and do it. You know, the multitasking thing. But I will give it a go if, if that would help people. Sky Fox says, I learned from the Friday Off The Grid YouTube series. Oh, I might have to have a little look at that. I think at the moment I'm... I've. I'm doing it with, is it Simply in Stitches? She does the um, vanilla socks. The unapologetic knitter pattern, I think it's called. Try two circular needles. Oh. How can I do it with two circular needles? That sounds a bit complicated, even for me. These colours are so nice. You can fix the V when you fasten the loose threads. Oh, okay, right. Nothing to worry about then. 
you've not done it wrong, there are ways to get over that. Good stuff. There's also a Learn to Knit Socks Facebook group you can ask questions in. Oh, is there? Oh, I'm, oh hold on. need to write that down. What did I do with my bit of paper? Oh, there it is. So, Facebook. I'll check out on Facebook for that then. I usually add an extra stitch on the cast on, then knit together the last stitch with the first stitch. Oh, good shout, yeah. Split your stitches in half and use one needle at a time. Oh, I'll have to have a little look at that. You may not have pulled the yarn tight enough at the join. I see that I knew that there was going to be something and it wasn't that I'd actually messed it up. I was sure of it, she says. At least it's got less holes in it than, than everything else that I've stitched or knitted. But then I have only got sort of a cuff and I've only just started working on the body. I think I've just done my first round or two rounds now of the, of the main body section. But yeah. I mean, I know it's a work in progress and I was like, well, you know what? If I don't try, I'm never going to know. And I thought, well, if I use a bit of wool that, you know hasn't cost me an absolute fortune in the hope that it will turn into something glorious my 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 viewpoint on it is that i will use this as practice make all the mistakes on this one and then hopefully when i've got some really really super duper lovely you know sock special wall i won't mess it up with that that's the plan i do love a good plan I started socks during the very first quarantine and love making them now. Fingers crossed, Tina. The only thing is, I think I'll be fine if I've got someone that can point me in the right direction. That was one of the reasons that I wanted to get started on this now, was because, like I say, I've got another retreat um, at Northampton um, in about three weeks' time. So I was thinking, well, if I if I sort of knit, knit some stuff up and then take it with me, I know Gina's going to be there. But I think there'll probably be other people there as well that could either give me pointers or show me things like how to, you know. Because my biggest problem is, if I knew I was confident that I knew how the stitches actually look. I mean, I know that sounds strange, but the the, the knitting, like when you when you, like when they say, can you count the number of knit stitches or knit in the knit? I can't. I don't know really what I'm looking for. I can only really tell the difference between a pearl and a knit, like when I'm looking at it, whether there's a bump or it's flat. That's that's about it. But when you've got a hole and you're sort of thinking, oh, okay, well I'll pull the needle out and I'll, I'll unravel that and take it back to that. That's the bit that worries me because I'm not sure I'd know what is a stitch to pick up versus what not to stick to pick back up. So I think it's something like that is where I actually need someone to help me. It's a bit like stitching, I suppose. There's certain things that we speak with stitching, sort of like fractional stitches. If it wasn't for YouTube, I mean, the difference with knitting, I find, is that because I actually knit really quite cat handedly and look like a four year old when I'm doing it, when I try and watch someone else do it on a YouTube video, orientation wise, I don't seem to be able to get my head around it. Yet, if I watch, say, someone trying to teach you how to do. French knots or fractional stitches on knitting, on, on your stitching, I get it. Because I, I can orientate myself. But with the knitting, for some bizarre reason, I don't seem to be able to orientate myself around. Could you go to Very Pink Knits on YouTube? She, go, she goes through it. Yeah, same thing. I tried that. As soon as I try and watch it on the TV, for some reason, I lose all my orientation. Yeah, I, line, I, that was what I was thinking. Take some knitting with a few little errors in to the retreats and someone there will be able to at least show me in person and I can actually see it and I can I can be behind them so I'll watch how they then do it with their needles because I think that's the biggest problem for me. It's an updated way of using double pointed needles. Four needle points but the circles are easier to hold. Oh, 
might have to look at that. Always good to have a learning pair to work out all the stuff. Totally. Shame I don't have it for a mirabilia as well then, isn't it? <laughs> because I could do with one every time I do backstitch. <laughs> so Laura's saying, what's the retreat in Northampton? Good question. I think it's supposed to be the what was the original Mirabilia retreat, but it's Mirabilia, no, not just Mirabilia now. So it was the original Mirabilia retreats where you would stitch Mirabilias, but now they've opened it up so that you don't just stitch Mirabilias, you can stitch what you like. I need to get yarn for all the Christmas socks I'm knitting this year. Oh wow, see, wouldn't that be great if I could knit if I could knit socks for Christmas as people's gifts? That would be I'd be over the moon. No one would get actual presents from me anymore. I'd be like, no, you're getting knitting socks and that's that. Because I paid for the yarn. <laughs> okay, where are we? One, two, three, four, five. Two, four, five. The crazy sock lady on YouTube has fantastic tutorials for knitting socks. <laughs> Hi Trees, I finally made it to my first live stream. I'm trying to teach myself to knit just so I can make cosy socks. Not going so well yet, but I'm determined to learn. Love all your stitching. <laughs> Welcome to my world, sweetheart. <laughs> Sounds like we're both on the same trip. You know, we, we should, you know, it's, it just must be a thing right now. Definitely a thing for me. And they're going to be the holiest socks. I mean, I did actually say when I was looking at this little um, round tube, because that's what it looks like, doesn't it? It's like a little little round tube thing. Um, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm like, do you know what? This just could turn into a very skinny leg warmer. I'm, so, I'm seeing where it's either going to turn into a really skinny leg warmer or, or it's going gonna, it's gonna to have like an appendage for an extra toe. <laughs> this space people it could get it could get rather interesting um i definitely second the suggestion about specialty stitches would love it okay stephanie i'm hearing you loud and clear i will have to definitely get my um my specialty stitch hat on and do some do some tutorial videos if that's what people want i'll do anything that helps people jordan says is there a stitch a stitching contact or group will turn it to Facebook foster parents cannot use social media YouTube is is excluded but not Facebook Twitter and the rest perhaps websites or email groups does anyone know the answer to that I'm trying to think I don't think there is anywhere that I know of where you can actually get information unless of course you reach out to someone like me who knows about when the stitching, you know, if it's if it's that you're looking to go to stitching retreats and those sorts of things, then obviously any stitching retreats that people know of, if you if you know someone that's going, you could reach out to them. But I don't actually know of any stitchy, stitchy groups that are just online. I think the only ones that you might be able to get away with is something like, um, oh, is it Stitchy Witch? I think she's got like a Discord, which is... It's a community of people where they sort of, you know, show each other their finishes and they talk about stitching and they share all the stuff and totally enable each other. Um, so I know that there's a, like, there's a Discord thing. Yeah, Sky Fox has just said, can Discord be used? If you can use Discord, then, then there are. If that helps. Susan, you're right. I do need one-to-one -one lessons for my knitting. Totally right. Except there isn't anyone to give me one-to-one -one lessons. So I'm trying to wing it on my own. <laughs> Although, I, you know, I say I wing it on my own, but I have a group... I have, I have a group of total enablers. They've been enabling me again last night and again this morning. Um, that whenever I get truly stuck and I need to go and look like an utter beginner... And send them pictures and say, ladies, I'm not quite sure what I've done. Any help? 
and they normally they normally send me all of like the links to special videos to go and watch or try to tell me what to do to try and fix the problem so in all fairness they are very good but it's not the same as having someone in the room to say no 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 don't do it like that do it like this so Jeanette just said floss tube on YouTube is your other option so if you want to sort of because you can always you can always sort of chat about stitching in the comments of the videos with other people so if you read through other people's comments um, then again you end up sort of chatting with other people that about sort of bits and pieces if that helps it's a good point though I mean if you can't use Facebook because it does, does seem that everything goes to Facebook these days, doesn't it? For like group type stuff. And, well, I'm useless at Facebook. I am like the worst, the worst social media person in the world. For either looking at it or commenting or... <laughs> I'm terrible. Leah says, look up knitting socks on two circular needles. I'll have to have a little look, my love, but thank you for the tip. I'll write that down in the tick. I think nine in, nine in circles are better than Chiegos. Yeah, I think I've got... What have I got? I thought they were Chiegos. Chiegos? They're Chiegos, aren't they? Yeah. Guy Fox says, I'm I'm in the Discord for stitching still. See, but how do you find okay, Sky Fox, you you're a bit more up on the whole uh, Discord thing over me. So how do people find Discord and how do people find stitchy Discords? X Stitch says, Are you planning any Christmas card making? I am. That's the plan. You know me and my best laid plans. I haven't quite decided what cards I want to make this year yet for the for the Christmas cards. But um, the plan will be to do cards. And hopefully this time I won't leave it all like to the last minute like I did last year. One, two, three, four, five. That can't be right. One, two, three, four, five. Hold on, I think we've gone wrong. <laughs> surprise, surprise. One, two, three, four, five. No. No, we have gone wrong. Have I managed to go wrong? Come on, really? No. Six. Talk amongst yourself, people. <laughs> I just sort this little mare out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we did go wrong. That's not very good. Okay. Um. Oh damn! The blast. Okay. Well, I'll just have to fudge it. Because you know how much I love to fudge these things. Okay. So that should be six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah. All right, we're back on track. We just need to make some adjustments there. Yesterday, I taught my friend's 16-year-old granddaughter to loom knit a hat. I was thrilled she did such a great job. She made a tiny hat from her builder bear. Oh, I love builder bears. She says, with a builder bear behind her. Oh, you can't see it. But I have actually got a builder bear up there. I just love it because I can dress it up and put clothes on it. It wasn't it wasn't my builder bear. It was actually um it was actually Lauren's. And then when Lauren got too old for bears in her room or wasn't happy with the dress or something, I bought some more dress stuff for it. And then I stuck it in here. Because that will be something that no doubt she'll want when she's older. And she remembers her Build-A-Bear. 
for knitting there or Ravelry groups. Yeah, I still can't quite get my head around Ravelry either. That's all a bit complicated for me. I can never work out how you download anything onto Ravelry. And then I don't really understand how the community part works. I did try to, I did try to watch a YouTube tutorial about how to navigate around in Ravelry. And I think that actually confused me more than, than I was already confused to start with. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> if video based, yes, Discord, I believe is video. Thank you, this, exclu this exclusion is a bit rough. Yeah, I can imagine it is. Stitchy Booknut, good morning from Australia. Good morning, what time is it there? Are you an early bird? Are you up like super early? It's a shame there are no craft groups being held regularly, especially in my area. No, I, to be honest, I mean, most craft groups and things only run, i found, through the week. They don't seem to do them on weekends, which would be really the only time that I could do them. Or evenings, but there's definitely nothing evening-wise. You can actually Google Discord and whatever topic you want, like knitting, and Google will put up links. Oh, didn't know that. Skyfox, I'm going to have to go and check that out, because I'm not even on a Discord. Well, actually, I think I am on a Discord, but from way back. But have I used it or gone on there? No, in all honesty. Any information is very, very wanted. Well, hopefully that might have helped you. Emma says, Builder Bears in Basildon are shut down, which is sad. Do you know what? I think the Builder Bear at Lakeside, I, I can't remember seeing that recently. So I do hope not. Thank God it's still online. Uh, but then I think everything is starting to go online, isn't it? Because cause it is the way at the moment. It is the way. Bonjour de France. See, so, you know, I can only say that because I've read it, but... Hello in France, welcome to the stream. <laughs> and I'm assuming that's De Chantel, so that must mean welcome to the stream Chantel from France. Am I right? Did I get that right? <laughs> Hi Norma, welcome to the stream. Hubby got up at 5.15. Yep, I know that alarm clock. Do love a good 5.15 alarm clock. Nothing quite like it. My husband would argue the point. Hi Angel in Singapore, welcome to the stream. Hello in Idaho. How was your birthday dinner and retreat? My birthday dinner was gorgeous. Do you know what, I have to show this, I haven't shown. So I'd done a live stream, when did I do the live stream? And I was talking about um, Swarovski um, ball balls and the, and the likes. So Swarovski do, they do ball balls and like, ornaments and Christmas things that I had hanging off my tree. Oh, my lovely husband. For my birthday, he didn't buy me an ornament, but he did buy me. He did buy me this. I love it, look at that. And because I'm so into my roses, he bought me this. I was just like, oh! So yeah, so it's got pride of place on my, on my desk. I mean, well, it says that it's a paperweight, but it's not a paperweight, and there's no way I'd ever use it as a paperweight. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think once I get upstairs done, it'll probably sit on like a mantelpiece upstairs. But it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely not a paperweight. <laughs> <laughs> but even he was like, because I did send him some links, because they, they do one where it's like a vase, like a glass vase, and then it's got flowers, that are on like these stems that you put into the vase. But yeah, super expensive. So, cause I had sent him something along that lines, but he decided to get me the big rose cause he said that was, that was more me. And especially since as I love all my roses in the garden. But I'll have to make sure that, um, I'll have to make sure that I, uh, purchase some Christmas baubles without him knowing. Because he will have a fit now that he's seen how much they are. So 
So Isabel, of course, of course, happy to see another French lady. And you make it sound, I wouldn't even like to say what you've said there. Bonjour Chantel. Yeah, see, I didn't do French. No, I'm not going to say anymore because I'll get it wrong. And I don't know what it says. <laughs> oh. Do you know what, though? That's one thing about the British that I, I sometimes do sort of sit there and think, you know, we really should try a little harder. Because every other, every other country that, that speaks a different language, they always seem to be able to speak really, really good English. And it's like, well, look, they've gone to the whole effort of learning our language and I don't know any other language. I know a little bit of Spanish, just a little bit. I know a little bit of German. But not enough that I could actually hold a conversation. That's for sure. Beautiful rose, yes. Can I ask a question about stitching on 20 count Ada? What do you recommend? Two over one full cross or two over one half stitch? Um, 20 count. Well, in all honesty, it's very much personal preference. It is very much personal preference. Um, so two over one full cross. Or two over one half stitch. I would say that two over one half stitch wouldn't be enough because I use two over one half stitch on 25 count. And I can't say that I'm 100% happy with the coverage. I would have preferred more coverage. So in all honesty, I would say full cross would be your way to go on a 20 count. But the only, the best way for you to decide is test stitch. Just get the fabric, mark out a, like, or basically stitch a 10 by 10 block both ways. And then see which one you like the, the coverage of. That is the best way to actually do it, is to actually test stitch. Because what is a perfect... Because a lot of stitching as well, a lot of people say to me, you know, well, you know, do you do full cross or do you do half cross? Do you use one strand? Do you use two strands? It's all very dependent, not only on, on the fabric, but it'll also be very dependent on, you know, the way you stitch. Some people have got a very, very tight tension. So for some people, it's, you know, they would need more. They would need more. So there are some people like, so Hades, for instance, where it says Hades, um, the recommendation for stitching a Hades is on a 25 count using two strands over one. Now, on a full cross. But I personally don't like that. I find that too, too bulky for me. And it all bulks up, especially when I'm doing full coverage. So for me, my preference is always 25 count, one over one. And I think I get the perfect solution or the perfect sort of coverage for my stitching. But I know a lot of people that will stitch two over one, full cross on a 25 count and, and they love that coverage. So I think it is very much personal preference and all to do with how you stitch. But definitely test stitch. Test stitch is the way to go to make sure that you're happy. Doesn't matter whether anyone else is happy with the coverage, but it's all about whether you're happy with your coverage. Bye, Susan. I'm off to do some crocheting. Have a good one, my lovely. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. I have lovely red roses in my garden right now. There is something special about autumn roses. Oh, this there is. Thank you, Teresa, for sharing your Velka Potoki stand with us, waiting for mine to be shipped. <gasps> Exciting. <laughs> Isabel says you crack me up. <laughs> Is that because I tried French? <laughs> uh, cross stitch button. Do you still have your mini villages? My mini villages? Mini villages. Not sure what that is. Is that what you mean, my frost, frosty forest? Is that what you mean? My experience is two over one full cross is bulky and you have problems getting the needle through. Yep. Love your accent. Rose is my flower. So beautiful. 
Yeah, so Karen says, I like one over one full cross on 20 count. Two over one ten is a bit sparse. There you go. Jane said, I would suggest two over two, particularly dark colours. Swap black for anchor 310. Good shout. If completely... Oh, if completely full coverage, no fabric can be seen, go for off-white cream, not stark white, which shows through. Again, I yeah, if you can get an ecru, that's always a good shout if you've got a particularly dark, if, if most of the chart is dark. Norma, Teresa, are you stitching on a floor stand or a table stand, and what are your recommendations on the stands? Oh, see now, stands, stands, what a controversial thing to talk about. <laughs> Any stand, lots of stands. I love them all. I like lap stands, table stands, floor <laughs> <Four> stands, <laughs> Lowry stands, needle need stands, Potoki stands. <laughs> we love the stands. Um, no, sorry, I should take that more seriously. I, the only reason I say that is because I did get a comment once that someone basically turned around and said, is there any particular reason that you need all those stands? You know, how many stands does a person need? So at that point I was like, oh, I could argue that till the cows come home, but I won't. Because <laughs> I think there is a stand for every situation, if that makes sense. So for me personally, if I'm sitting at a desk and I'm going to a retreat and I want a desk stand or I want I want something for a desk or to sit up at a table, then the Lowry desk stand is a deal breaker. It's very, very sturdy. It, do, it doesn't move around. Once I've got this, if I tighten this up, you see what I mean. So if I, if I try to wiggle that, I'm really having to wiggle the whole table to get it to wiggle. Um, but then equally my Velka Batoki stand, my little desk stand. That is great, but the problem with that is I'm very limited on the size of Q-snap that I can use. Um, I think I think it takes, I mean, even then, I mean, for people that use hoops, I think, because um, it does take, it does take hoops, but again, I think it's a little bit, I think sometimes if you're working on something big, it's not like you could put a massive, great big Q-snap into it. And, and work with that or you couldn't use a you know a really big hoop or, and use that um hold on we need to count again she says one two three four there we go um floor stands oh floor stands again floor stands i mean my go-to is always my needle need stands but i would say that because most of the stuff that I do on my floor stand is is done on my big scroll bars but that said I do have a Velka Potoki floor stand which when I'm working on the Q snaps is yeah I, I love using that the only problem with that is I've become so accustomed to having my iPad because most of the time I'm working on my full coverages or I'm working electronically and on the needle need stands, I do like to be able to have my iPad sat on the top of it so that when I'm stitching, I just look up like I am now when I'm talking to you. So I can sit and stitch, look straight up, see where I need to be, look back down and off I go. Whereas with the other stand that I've got, um, the floor stand, I would have to have the iPad over on a table, which means I would then be constantly turning and then I potentially could either injure myself because, yeah, I'll end up putting my back out or my neck out that way. And the only other ones that I've got, the floor stands that I've got, is the um, is the Lowry stand. But, I mean, the Lowry stand does hold my scroll bars. Like, you can clamp it onto the side of the Lowry floor stand. But the floor stand... I have to put underneath the foot of the sofa or put some books on the bottom of it so that it doesn't wiggle around too much. Um, and I don't like the fact that the minute I put scroll bars on there that are beyond sort of, I don't know, I think about a 24 inch, anything bigger than a 24 inch and it starts to weigh heavy on one end and I normally sit on my recliner with my feet up. Um, so yeah, I struggle with that a little bit in all fairness.
Don't want to go wrong, people. Okay, so that's that. Okay. That. I received my Velka Potoki last week after 8.5 months of waiting. So, so happy with it. It's brilliant and lights and light surprisingly it is i mean that's the, i liked it because it's a perfect thing for me to take to work it was a perfect thing to use on a train it's perfect for when i go to the stitching retreats um it's portable if i want to lay in bed i can lay in bed and actually stitch now which i couldn't do before because i've never held i've never held frames and stuff in my hand i've never learned to do it like that because i've always stitched two-handed and for some bizarre reason, even to this day, I still can't manage to stitch sort of holding holding it with one hand and sti like stitching with one hand. I, can't, I just can't do it. And then I feel like it's, it's taking forever to stitch anything. Okay, let's put this back up make sure you can't see it there. Um, more threads more threads people look at me I've actually got a patch of actual stitching done even though I have stopped a million times <laughs> I do believe I might be learning the art of multitasking Hi everyone, just got back from cleaning the animal shelter and saw you were on. So maybe I'm very late. The progress on your piece is coming along pretty. Hi Cynthia, welcome to the stream. Oh, it's so nice that you've been to the animal shelter to help them out. That's lovely. I don't think we've got any local to us. Danielle says, thank you for the answer. I'm going to test it. Definitely test it. Like I say, I mean, just by looking at the comments, you can see that everyone has got a different view. So every, everyone has got like a thing, a personal thing. And deciding on deciding on one strand versus two strands versus full cross versus half stitch is very much about what you stitch like. So if your tension is... You know, if you don't tug too hard or if you're, you know, you're what I call a tugger where you, you know, you, you, you always, it's always to do with tension as well as natural coverage. So we've all got things that we like. I'm definitely the one, the one over one on 25 count without a shadow of a doubt. But I know lots of people that would look at that and be like, no, I don't like that. But literally to do your test stitch, the best thing to do is to don't don't just use one colour. So I don't know, every other every other stitch do like a different colour. And do it in a ten by ten block and then fill in the gaps with another colour. Because that would that would be would that would be what you would normally do. You wouldn't just keep doing straight runs of just one colour. So if you do it with more than one colour and do it with two colours for instance, um, it'll make it so that you'll get a bit more of a feel for how bulky it gets um, as well as because obviously you're going to run stuff behind it it will give you a bit of an idea of does it make a difference whether you're using a dark thread and a light or a light thread of whether that changes how you how it looks for your stitching so definitely do that but do do two identical but just do one in a tent stitch with the two different colors on alternates and then do exactly the same thing for the for the full cross and see which one you like. Hi all, late to the party. Hope you're all well. Hi Jojo, welcome to the stream. Candy says, I stitch in many different places and situations, so different stands for different things. Thank you, Sandy. I, Candy, I thought it was just me. <laughs> I've seen stitchers use music stands to hold iPads while stitching. That is a good shout, but because because I tend to mostly stitch on on my sofa, by the time I've got my stand in front of me and I've got a table next to me, 
if I start putting anything else around me, like the chances are that as I move the stitching out of the way, I'll knock over the the iPad, you know, the the music stand, and then the iPad will go flying. Well, you can just imagine the sort of drama that could possibly come from that for me. So I always tend to find that, yeah. I mean, I do use my iPad sat next to me. But most of the time I'm working full coverage. So most of the time I like to have my iPad directly in front of me. Which is why the needle knee stands for me is a bit of a deal breaker. My Halloween costume arrived. I'm a sloth. <laughs> are you going to post a picture of that on Discord? Because if you are, I need to go and find where this Discord is because that I've got to see. <laughs> oh dear, Halloween sloth. Rebecca says she's talking about those villages you construct for family members. Constructed for family members, the villages. Villages? Oh, not the gingerbread houses. Is that what you mean? Oh, I know what you're talking about. You mean the, um, um, like the Christmas thing where you put your Christmas houses on it. Is that what you mean? I think that's what she means. She's talking about the villages you construct for family members. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one where you've got like the little light up houses and I made the, the sort of the surround for them. I think that was what you mean. Teresa, your snowman looks awesome. Stitching with white threads never seemed to look right. Yours are brilliant. Hugs, Lynn. Hey, Lynn. Do you know what? It's funny you should bring that up. It was a discussion that I wanted to bring to the bring to the stream. So, whilst I was at the um, Chatelain retreat, there was a conversation with the woolly hatted stitcher and another lady where we was discussing the fact that I can't stand working with white DMC specifically blank now since I first started stitching I have found that I'm finding that the B5200 is a better option because this is B5200 here and it's much more fluffy and it's not quite as bad as this one over here however part of the conversation was have I tried the sulky thread so I was like, well, no. And she was saying that the sulky thread is equals to 2 DMC. So, Chris, I fell down the rabbit hole, couldn't help myself. I thought, well, if, if, if that is the case, then this could be a game changer. Like, total game changer for me. Particularly for the 310 black and for the blank, for the white. So, I ordered it and it turned up. But since it's turned up and I've done a little test stitch... So let me show you. Right, so this is... Let me see if I can get this flat so you can see. I can't get it any closer, I don't think. I think I think we're down as close as we get. We are. Okay, so this is B5200. There. Okay, so it's a little fuller, I think, and a little bit more fluffy, and you can't see so much. This is blank. So this is... This is the normal, normal white. Now... I did a little test stitch. Let me crank this. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, no. Why can't I do this? Why do you have to be over there? Hold on. Ignore my legs, people. This, this needs to be discussed and shown so that we can all discuss this. Okay. So I'm expecting input, people. Okay, right. So I've done a little test stitch here. All right. Oh, come on camera. The camera doesn't like it when I do things like this. You can tell, can't you? Okay, let me see if I can bring it. Oh, oh. No. No, it doesn't like it. Oh, hold up. If I put my hand down there, it might pick it up. Oh, would you believe it? Why? Why, why today? Of all days, do you now want to do this to me? There we go. Okay. 
So the stitches to the right, these ones over here, I've done two strands. Hold on, let me get you a bit closer. There we go. Can you see? So you can see the ones that are big and chunky and fatter, and you can see the ones that are a little bit skinnier. Okay, so these are the ones that are the skinnier ones, and these ones here are the fatter ones. Now, when I've done my little test stitch, because I was under the impression that one strand of Sulky is equals to two strands of DMC, I argue that point, because if you look at those there, and then we look at this here, I would say I still need two strands of Sulky to give me the fullness. I mean, yes, it would be slightly thicker than this is for two strands, but the one strand, which was the whole point of the deal breaker, the deal breaker was that the idea is, is that the Sulky should be a substitute for two strands of DMC. And when I've done the test stitch, it doesn't, it doesn't work out that way. It really doesn't. I don't know what anyone else's... What, what is the findings for others who have used the sulky thread? But when I looked at it... So this is the sulky thread. Hold on, let's whiz you back down again. See, now that is... Actually, let's put it on... Let's put it there. Okay. So that is one strand of sulky thread. Now, I have got somewhere here. Yes, I have. I've got some blank. Need a needle. There we go. Nick this one. Let's do this, shall we? Okay. So this is DMC blank. So we'll put that next to it. Okay, so the sulky is that one to the this side, and that one is that side, right? Now, that's the sulky thread there. That's the one strand of DMC. So it is arguably slightly thicker than a single strand. No, that's definitely 12 weight. Yeah, it's a 12 weight. 12 weight solid cotton. This is a king size spool and not a baby spool. Now, the thing is, is even this, if I fold this in half, has two strands. I still can't see how they can say that one strand of sulky is equals to two strands of DMC. I would argue that the sulky is one and a half strands of DMC, but definitely not two. What are you all saying? I think sulky is equal to 1.5 DMC, not two full threads of DMC. I agree, I agree. I've tried Sulky and I'd say it's more like 1.5 strands of DMC, so not quite two strands. Depending on the weight of Sulky, it is a 12 weight or a 30 weight. Is that the 12 weight? It is the 12 weight. I've checked that. I have three, three strands. Love the Lowry though. Oh, sorry, I have three stands. <laughs> Teresa, is that your new grime guard? Looks lovely. <laughs> this one isn't my new one, love. That one's on a different project. <laughs> Sorry for being late as the stitchy witch also had her stream. Oh, I didn't realise I was bashing into her timing. Hi, Viv. Definitely not two strands. I'm so pleased you all said that because I thought it was just me. I thought I was going mad. But the question is then, so, so I'm going to throw this out to you. I have got some white to stitch further up in this, in this little bit here. 
So the question is, because the sulky thread, I think the whole idea of using the sulky versus the DMC is that if you use the sulky thread, you use one strand. Now obviously that's not gonna work because as far as I'm concerned, I have enough trouble with not getting enough coverage with two strands of DMC. So the question is, the sulky seems to be more rounded. The DMC is not as rounded. So if I was to use two strands of sulky, does it work the same as doing two strands of DMC? Regarding the B5200, what size equals two strands of DMC? I got five meter, but it's too big. Sorry, regarding the B5200, what size equals two strands of DMC? So the D, the, so I found that the B5200 is much more in line with the normal DMC range and that if you use two strands of B5200, I get good coverage. If I try to use two strands of blank, it never seems like it's as thick as the B5200. So B5200 is, is, is the better version versus the blank. But my question now is, can you use Sulky doubled up as two strands? Yeah, Karen, I've seen lots of people that have used a single strand of Sulky on a 36 count and the coverage is glorious. But for those of us that aren't using a, 30, a 36 count and we're using 25 or 28, I think this is a 28 or even a 32 count, my question is, would it look silly if you tried to use two strands of Sulky instead of two strands of DMC? I think two strands of Sulky would be too bulky depending on your fabric count. I agree on the B5200 better coverage. Yep, yeah, definitely. Another option would to be to do the top leg of the cross stitch with Whisper. I think I did that on some black once before and I found that that, that was a good, a good fix. But there's certain things that I don't want that fluffiness. You know, I mean the snowman, arguably the snowman could have been more fluffy. But this part that's going to be in the door, which I'm not quite sure what that is yet, but when I get there, I'm pretty sure I don't want it fluffy, is the thing, she says. Watch that space. Could end up love, loving the fluffy. I think you should go ahead and try, see what happens. <laughs> is that because you just want me to be the guinea pig and say, this is what happens when you use two, two strands of sulky? <laughs> I'm seeing where this is going. Use trees as the guinea pig. Okay, where are we? Before I get lost again. Okay. So we want three. What if you use one strand and do top stitch twice? That's a good idea. Because then it would be one and a half off, wouldn't it? Instead of two full. That's a good idea. Maybe we should try that. What do we reckon? That might be a good shack, Karen. I think I'm rather liking your idea. Seeing where you're going with that. Although, it's going to be a bit complicated to remember what I'm doing when I get there. <laughs> it might look a little bulky for, use, for using two strands of sulky. Then again, it might give it a third dimension effect. Yeah, it could do. Well, I'm, I'm quite liking the idea what Karen said. So in other words, what Karen's saying is if I do the bottom leg as a single strand and then do my top leg as a, like double the top leg, it wouldn't be as much as having the two strands for the bottom leg and then the two, two strands for the top leg. Use flop. I'm going to have to look this flock up. What is flock? Come on, educate me. I need to educate in here. Is it similar to the wispy? Or whisper thread? One, two, three. 
DMC cotton flock. Oh. Oh. I might have to go on a little purchase again. You enablers, you. What are you doing to me? I thought buying the sulky was going to be the answer to all my problems. Which apparently it is. As long as it's 36 count or above. <laughs> no, not similar. Softer than normal DMC. Oh, oh! I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to get some of that so I can try all that then. So, and do you find that that gives you better coverage? Oh, and it's pronounced flush, flush, <laughs> flush. <laughs> okay, right. So it's not flock, it's flush. Is that right, flush? <laughs> really? Check out Mary Corbett's blog. She had a good article on it. I think I might have to. Used for monograms typically and for that other 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 white work. So am I saying that right? Floosh. Floosh. It must be floosh, right? Karen, come on. You've made me say it. Have I said it right? Flowish. <laughs> Flowish? Flu, <laughs> flow, ooh, sh, flowish. Is that right? That all sort of. <laughs> no, it's not right. <laughs> See, it's times like this that I wish people could just be. Oh, you're sitting there just shouting now, aren't you? You're going, like, Teresa, what are you saying? No, flu. No, flu in pronunciation. Like Josh, but with a fl. Flosh? Trees are tricotton of Rudin. <laughs> Use of white work in bright. <laughs> this is hilarious. No, not for me, it's not. <laughs> oh dear. So. So, like Josh, but with a flirt. Flosh. Is that it? Have I got it? Yes! We got there! Okay, so I need to get myself some flosh. <laughs> What's that? It's French. Oh, is it French? I don't know. Is it French? Yes, like, like Josh. Flosh. Okay, we've got it. We've got there. You got it. Since all of you knew what it was as well. <laughs> That's too funny. I'm having so much fun, thank you. <laughs> yeah, my expense. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> oh, my life. Well, it's a good job that I didn't sit there talking about it on my floss tube video and then everyone commented in the comments going, Teresa, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear although this video will go up afterwards and then everybody's going to be laughing <laughs> so the, the only thing is though because the brain has a reaction of like not being able to retain information the, uh, the thing we're going to have to test here is that by next week you need to ask me how you say it and I'm going to see if I can remember I'm just going to keep trying to remember Josh so it's flosh but whether this little brain will retain that will be something totally different. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Yes, I really appreciate that. I will go and check out the flosh and order some and we can do a little, we can do a little test stitch together and see what we think. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do it next week. If I order it, I should be able to get some. It's not a particularly hard thread to get hold of, is it? So Haley says, I was saying floosh too, because when people add more oohs, you go ooh. <laughs> See, and I thought I was the only one. I'm like, they're they saying ooh. So I'm like, floosh? Is it floosh? <laughs> Welcome to Dorinda's Comedy Hour. <laughs> 
See, now you're all loaning up that I wasn't the only one that was just sitting there saying floosh. You was all saying the same thing when you was reading it, right? <laughs> Um, how are you going with the Summer Rosewood Manor sampler? Uh, in all in all honesty, I haven't actually um, done very much on it at all. That's the one with the Veldani threads, right? Am I right? Is that the one we're talking about? And I, I have got a bit of a pet hate for them. Pretend you've had too much wine and you're trying to say floss, <laughs> but with a slur. Do you know what? If this was Saturday night, I could sort of go with that, couldn't I? I could be like, well, I've had a little tipple before I came on. <laughs> but I can't really pull that one off on a Sunday night. The most thing I can be, yeah, sozzled over would be the amount of copious amounts of coffee that I might have had today. Which I don't think would make me slur. It might actually have the opposite end of the spectrum. Skyfox says, I too was saying floosh. Let's see. <laughs> I'm feeling so much better. <laughs> the O is longer. Check Google. Oh. The O is longer. Oh, I'm going to have to call that up and, and, and let it tell me her. So, I, I will send you some. <laughs> Sweetheart, are you sure? Have you got some? I don't want to just sort of, you know, start taking your stash. So, let me just see. So, the flosh, question mark, French. Never heard that word. I think it's just something that they call, because the DM, DMC is from France, but I think it's just a brand. I think it's like one of the brands of the DMC range. So, you didn't like the Valdani threads either? No, I... I I've got to be honest. I'm not. I'm not liking the um, the Valdani threads. But then at first, I wasn't sure whether it was because it was the fabric that was causing the problem. The two French ladies are probably Skyfox, Libioza. <laughs> oh no! What is going on? <laughs> Yes, I have, and I have no projects earmarked for it. Well, if you wouldn't mind sending me a skein, I will pay you. You just need to, like, give me a PayPal, and I'll pay you for it. And then what I'll do is I'll do it on live stream next week, and we'll see we'll see what it turns out to be. I meant they are cracking up. <laughs> that always longer. Laughter is the best medicine. Speaking of medicine, Teresa, how are you feeling and when will you be going back to work? Funny you should talk about that. I am actually working from home now. Um, hold on, let me just make sure I don't... If I don't mark this off, you know what's going to happen, right? I'm going to end up where I don't want to be. There we go. Um, so, because I can't get around without a crutch for any real distance from walking... I mean, I can I can get about, but as soon as I have to constantly walk, where it's the whole walking action, my hip is rocking. Um, so I need to use a crutch. So because of that, um, my boss basically said, I don't want you coming into London. I said, in, in fear that I sort of fall over, I hurt myself. So they've said um, to work from home until such times as I'm fully able-bodied under two, uh, with just my two feet and not any extra help. So... If all appears as it appears now, I won't be going back into the office until, well, until after I've had the hip replaced. Because I'm going to see the consultant tomorrow afternoon. Because this seems to be as good as it gets. It doesn't. It doesn't get any better now. They've said so. Um, so yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see one if he agrees, and that we've left it long enough for it to do the best that it was going to do. And two, if that is the case, how quickly he can or wants to pull me back in for the hip replacement. That's where I'm at at the moment. But that said, I'm still having to work. I'm still, I've am still. i been working from home since Tuesday last week. And I tell you, that was a culture shock, just having to remember to use one's brain. Very interesting. Very tiring. I didn't realise how tiring it is to work and test one's brain. Yes, I have. 
I have to look at the flosh. Yes, you do. I think we've all got to look at the flosh now. So S Sparkles says, I will send an email. It will take more than a week to get to you, though. It will be coming from Canada. Oh, I'll tell you what. No, don't worry then, sweetheart. Don't worry. I'll get some from here in the UK. I'm pretty sure Lakeside Needle Crafts or somewhere like that should be able to get it because I want to do the test on stream. And since it's going to be all fresh in our mind from this time round, it, it makes sense. What is my work? So I'm a I'm an executive assistant. In other, in other words, I'm a glorified skivvy is what I am. But it does require me to sit on my butt all day long, which is not good for this hip. Half of the problems that I have with my hip is sitting for too long. It doesn't like it. And although I've got an ergonomic desk that stands up and sits down, it doesn't like me to stand up for too long either. I have to actually move it. It's almost like the more static it stays, the worse the pain gets. But if I get on it and I sort of move around, it seems to free it up a little bit. Haven't heard of flock, but I hand dyed my fabric so it shrank a bit. I like the sulky, first time I've tried it. Yeah, I think on a 36 count, I think the sulky is going to be a bit of a game changer, but I don't very often stitch on anything that high. Your hip might be lousy, but you look terrific. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Thank you so, so much. I wish I felt it sometimes. <laughs> I was just thinking we need to see how many difficult stitching words we can get her to say online. <laughs> Candy, Dad, they come on. Play nicely, young lady. <laughs> so Anna says, I just had a hip replacement, so glad I did it. Yeah, see, I'm feeling, I'm not looking forward to it, I'll be honest. Although, although I keep saying I just want to get it fixed. I do want to get it fixed, but I'm not looking forward to it. But I think because at the moment I'm at the age where I want to do all the things, but I can't do all the things. And everyone's saying, wait, wait until you're older, you know, persevere with the pain for as long as you can. It's all very well and good people saying that. But by the time I then get around to having the hip replaced, I probably won't want to do all the things. Yeah, I'll be able to. So it's like, well, I don't understand why I would wait, if you see what I mean. But to be honest, I don't think I could wait. This this hip wakes me up all night. All night long this goes on. Every time I try and move my leg. Um, it's just like floss, but with a shush at the end. Oh, Danielle, don't get me to say it again. It's, it's, it's already gone out of my head. See, I feel like a dory. I should be on Finding Nemo. Can you please let me know where you got your Q-snap holder from or maybe provide me with a link trying to search it online but regular stands pop up only sure if um, 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 um I'm just trying to think how you can reach out to me um send me an email send me an email with your email I will send you a link or unless you've got an Instagram account or something that I can that I can ping you on Cynthia says thanks for the update must have felt good to get back to work especially working from home um, it was, but the only thing is, is I'm not enjoying not having my own time <laughs> doing the stitching because I haven't really done much stitching at all this week because of that. And yeah, I, I've sort of quite liked being able to sit and do all my stitching. I think Karen idea is great so that stitching will look the same as the other two strand stitches if stitched over two. Yeah, Bibs, I think I think that might be. I'm, I think I'm going to trial it anyway just to see what it comes out like. Deborah says, did you fall and hurt your hip? No, no, I've got, um, it's bone on bone. So they call it osteo, but it's not osteo. Um, because I don't actually have um, a full damaged hip. I've just got like a big patch of cartilage missing on the top of the hip ball that goes into the socket. It's more just, well, arguably a genetic stroke being a runner all my life type thing but as I said it can't just be about wearing the hip out too quickly on certain places because otherwise every runner in the world that's run from a young age would have hip problems and that's not the case so Roxy says treadmill desk yeah apart from I would only be able to walk on the treadmill and I would want to run <laughs> has anyone else noticed that threads are harder to get especially the specialty threads I know there's a problem with the uh the treasure braids at the moment the petite treasure braids there's a shortage 
Um, I don't know if it's a kickback from COVID that's caused it, but there is a there is a big shortage here in the UK for those types of threads. Um, you need a just, an adjustable desk. I have one and just push a button, it raises and lowers. Sally, that's what I've got here. So I've got one here and I've got one in the office. But the problem is, is once I have the desk standing, um, I'm still just stood. I'm not actually moving the hip around. I'm not, I'm not walking on it or moving it. So just static standing doesn't help my hip at all. That's almost as bad as just sitting on it. But it is a good shout. And I do love my sit-stand desk. I love that. Hi, Cheesa, I can relate. My back reacts the same way. I can't sit for long. I can't stand for long. I agree with the others. You always look amazing. Oh, you sort are always so lovely to me. Always, always. Do you know what? If I was ever to be one of those people that has down days, I think I would just have to come and do a live stream and just sit and talk to you all because you always, always are always so lovely to me. And it does mean a lot. And it definitely, you know, anyone that has down days they should just come and do live streams and talk to people because yeah you're lovely trees is beautiful both inside and out oh see don't you love me well you love me welling up next and then you'll have me in tears and i'll look like some emosh emosh lady <laughs> <laughs> hello i have a question can you explain couching no i can't because i can't do it or i can but i don't do it because that would then mean it would be very much to do with backstitch and that's about the only time that I would couch anything is to couch backstitch. And I have a passion of dislike for backstitch. But basically, um, had to explain it. Oh, it looks like someone's already explained it. Couching is where you have one thread on top of the fabric and you use another thread to stitch it down. So basically what you would do, so say for instance we had this, we would lay our thread where we want it and then using our needle so i'm just going to bring this up here because i can so when we're talking couching so you would have the you would have that there like that and then what you would do is you would then bring this thread back down over and back into the same hole where it came out like so and then that way it would pin it down but at no point would you see where it's couched if that makes sense see what i mean so if that's there like that see that if you then take that needle back down in the same hole that will pin it down and you won't necessarily you won't see where it's been couched but it allows for you to sort of manipulate how this how this looks and then you just couch it into place in in sections or in places there we go hope that explains what it is maybe we should do a demonstration when i have some backstitch and to be honest i i don't do it because I, I don't like backstitch but maybe maybe i should trial it do a bit of backstitch as you were supposed to do backstitch and then do a bit of couching and we can look at the difference and see see if it's any better couldn't see on lakeside ebay do colors amazon sell it but out of stock looks nice thread to stitch with dmc flosh threads i keep having to think of it don't i i'm gonna forget what it's called <laughs> i'll see if i can find it i'm i'm pretty sure that i mean i'm not sure whether it's west end embroidery has closed down um but somewhere like west end embroidery or the london bee company might have something like that etsy have loads send pics to your messenger oh thank you jane appreciate that my love elaine i know folks that the insurance the us say the same of you're too young but it's such a huge quality of life. oh yeah it's such a huge quantity of life and i think of the muscular wastage if you aren't as active well the, the problem i've got is i've now got one one thigh <laughs> One thigh that is losing muscle like it's going out of fashion and is going all sort of, yeah. I'm losing size on one, one thigh versus the other, which basically means that I'm losing, I'm losing my muscle on the hip. And as they've already said, the more muscle that you have, the better your recovery is. This is one of the arguments that I had with him over the hip replacement, is that for the hip replacement, 
it makes more sense that they crack on and do it sooner rather than later because the more muscle wasted I've got, the harder it is going to be for me to get back to what I'm used to. I had a vascular necrosis of the femoral head and also had rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. Five joint surgery in three years. Oh, Anna, poor you, my lovely. I hope you're doing better now. You have a kind soul, beautiful on the inside and out. Oh, Emma, you're so sweet. I think you're amazing dealing with all that pain. I couldn't do what you're doing with what you're going through. Well, Nanette, you know how we, you know the old saying, you'll be surprised what you can suffer when you just have to suffer it. So that's what I do. But I think I've spent so much time with this creeping on that although if the pain had just come on one day, like overnight, I would probably argue that I don't know how I cope with it. But because it's the sort of pain that's now been going on over the course of like the last three years where it's just progressively be getting worse and worse. Then I had the surgery, which obviously put it in a lot of pain because you can barely move it. But then that sort of goes back off. But now we've gone to like a dull, a duller version of the surgery pain is basically where I'm at, which obviously I'm pretty used to from before anyway. So you'll be surprised what you cope with when you've, when you've been dealing with it for some time. You become accustomed to it, I'm sure. But you don't realise how bad it is until you get it fixed. And then it's like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Close to the hole, you can come up. Not necessarily the same hole. You can pinch the thread to be couched. Gold work technique. Yeah. If you want to know how you do couching, if you go and look on YouTube um, for some gold work um, couching, it, they go into real, real, really good detail on there. So that's a good shout. Thank you for that shout. Thank you for explaining S Sparks and Trees out. I got a Santa kit and it says to couch and was confused. MZ Diamond, definitely go and have a little look on YouTube. And if you look in, if you type in um, gold work couching technique, you'll see it nice, you know, right up front, right up close so that you can actually see exactly how they do it. That will sort of hopefully help you. Interested to see what, what Santa kit you've got though that requires couching. Jane says, right, who's chuckling? Oh, who's, who's chucked the frog out? He's down here by the sea. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if I stitch much more, I think I could end up with him down with me as well. So I'm, I think I'm getting close to calling it a day. It is eight, eight minutes past eight now. We've, we've, we've been on for two hours, people. How much stitching did you all get done? What time is next weekend's live? Now, see, Hannah, normally I would say that next weekend's live would be the morning one. But, but given, given that we have just discussed what we've discussed and the fact that there's 205 of you that are now sitting there, no doubt, holding it to me that I need to get hold of these threads and we do a little test stitch to, to, to do this online together, <laughs> I might have to make it an evening one so that it's like this one at 6 o'clock next week. What do we reckon? Do you reckon we should switch and just have another late one next week so that we can go over this? Screams at the word of the day like Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> Cost the same as silk. Blame me. Yeah. Catching allows you to manipulate the thread more so that you can avoid those sharp edges. Yeah, I need that. Could you swing the hoop on your hips while standing? <laughs> Jane, you're not funny. <laughs> I probably could. Just not right now. Um, well, as women just deal with it, the pain as long as it can. Yeah, we are very good at holding pain, aren't we? I mean, well, we are what we are. Coffee Rex, so sorry I've missed it. We'll watch the... We'll watch the fees back later. Ah, don't worry. Don't worry. There'll be another one next week. I think that's the plan. That's the plan, people. Let's switch you on over. Okay, so what have we got here? No stitching. Enjoying the video and the chat too much to stitch. Do you mean that you sat there and you've not actually stitched anything? Is that what you're trying to tell me? 
I've got a lot done, but then I didn't do much chatting. Lisa, well done. Well done. You sat there listening to me doing all the chatting. Although I'm, I don't feel too bad. I did I did actually manage to get like, a nice block of colour done, which is very rare for me. I normally get about 10 stitches and spend the rest of the time talking. <laughs> I don't know why I call it a live stream stitch with me. It should be live stream you stitch with me and I'll chat is what we should call it. Uh, during the first lockdown, when you were building models of towns, don't know what they called. My dioramas, that's what... So when you're talking about the little villages, we're talking about the dioramas. I will be doing dioramas again for Christmas. Um, I know, I think my mum... My mum's my mum's got one. It depends on whether she wants hers extended. Um, my brother did mention that he quite liked the idea of one, so he may put a put a hand up for one and then I'll probably do another one for me so I have a new one for this year so MZ Diamond it's a Dimensions Gold collection candy cane satin is the kit and it's got couching in it interesting none baby is refusing to go to sleep at the moment I'm sure she knows <laughs> well that's alright I might as well have had a baby sitting on my lap mightn't I I might have got a bit more stitching done yes please same time as today yes please six i have a square almost filled in well done sky fox got 107 stitches today <laughs> get in there <laughs> as 107 i would say it's 107 more than me but i don't think i did too bad i did get I reckon there's about 50 stitches there. I think we did we did well on this two-hour stream. I got 50 stitches done. <laughs> I'm just getting my stitching out now. Hayley, what on earth have you been doing? <laughs> I got 280 stitches in my Soda Harry Potter sale for last year. That's what I like to hear. Stitch to Teresa's chat. I'm five stitches off of a finish. Stitchy book nut. Well done, you. I think we should give you a round of applause if you're going to get a finish. A finish on a stream. I would love to get a finish on a stream. I need to do that. Todd, sat watching you whilst knitting. What have you started again? <laughs> I know. I know. What am I like? I do everything but stitch when listening to Teresa. <laughs> Well, look, I thank you so, so much at the bottom of my heart for you to all hang out with me and to keep me occupied. And I hope I've been your 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 amusement for the evening or day or afternoon or morning, depending on whereabouts in the world you might be. I've had an absolute blast. Although, I must admit, you know what? I do these streams and my cheeks actually hurt from the smiling and the laughing. I'll be totally honest with you. I get off of this and I'm like, oh, my face hurts. <laughs> My face hurts from all the smiling and laughing. It's just too funny. I had to frog laughing too much and not concentrating. Isabel, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'm, I'm hoping that I don't have to frog anything, but I will find that out when I get off stream. So, yeah. But huge thank you, everyone, for, for the fun tonight. It's always fun to come and hang out with you. Um, and like I say, I'm going to see if I can get my hands on some of that Floss stuff. Flosh? Yeah. I'm going to see if I can get hold of some flosh. And then we can do a little... We can do the trial. So we can try the Karen test on the sulky. Where we do one strand for the bottom leg and two strands for the top leg. Or two, two double top legs. And then we can try the flosh. And then we can try it against the B5200 versus the blank. And then we can just all sit here and... Yeah, you know, pick holes in Teresa's stitching. All right? How does that sound? <laughs> well, thank you so, so much, everyone. Have a lovely week. Have a lovely evening, afternoon, morning, whichever it is for you now. I'm going to go and head off and have a nice cup of tea and stop smiling because my face hurts. So, till next time, people. Bye-bye for now.